Hello everybody, welcome to my off-road tutorial. Today we will talk about how we can add a layer of detail in our crash animation. This is only a quick tip for adding some ground particles uh, when your model hits the ground and how they, they will collide with your model. We can use this in any purpose, uh, even for footprints in water or dirt if you like. The setup is, is basically the same, I'll show you in another video how to do it. So, uh, I already animate a crash with this model. We can find it in the link below. Big thanks to Video Copilot for sharing it with us. So first of all, I'm adding a noise curve modifier on the rotation channel of my camera. It's gonna give you a little random if you're in your camera animation. Give it a look, give it look like a, a, a human is, is holding the camera. All right. So I'm switching uh, the viewport. We will we will see much better the whole animation. Good. I'm using this little button to copy the modifier and pass it uh, to another rotation channel. You you want to play a bit with these settings because the noise can be too powerful or, or shaky or both in the same time. I'm I only set a couple of keyframes with which drive the entire animation and this little noise do the rest of the job. Next time, I duplicate my ground object, add a subdivide modi modifier, uh, and give it a good polygon density. I'm using the vertices like uh, it's a pixel density. I want as much as my computer can, can handle. In the physics panel, add a dynamic paint canvas to the ground and, and the brush to the X-wing. Set your paint distance, it, uh, it depends on of how big your, your scene is. So in my case, I go with uh, 0.1 for now. And select the subdivide ground plane and switch from paint to weight and add a vertex group in the dynamic paint output. Yes, the X-Wing prints his, its contact on the ground now, but uh, because of the frame rate, there is uh, some holes between each frame. So set the sub-steps to three, maybe more if your animation is very dynamic, and make sure you enable anti-aliasing too. You need to enable the fade property. Uh, it allows the vertex group to disappear after a, a defined number of frames. I'm going with 10, maybe a, a bit less though. Um, I'm going with, with five and I'll increase the paint distance from my brush, so it's uh, the X-wing. All right, looks good for me. But, uh, now it's time to bake. Uh, now that the baking part is done, uh, let's take a, a look at how it looks like. I'm just adding a mask modifier with our vertex group in it. As you can see, every contact remains visible, but uh, we want to see only the part with a value between 0.01 .01 and 1. Add a vertex weight edit. You can find it in modifier panel. Move it above the mask and add your vertex group and enable group remove. Now we need to add another modifier. This time it's uh, this place, just to keep our plane above the ground and set the strength to 0.01, just a, a little value, with no texture in it. And in the physics panel you can add the collision property to the X-wing, set the damping to 1 and the friction to 0.5. Add a collision to the ground too, and dumping 0.5, friction 0.5, and it's time to create our particle setup. So go to a particle panel and add a particle layer to the masked, to the masked plane. Set the start and end value in the emission panel to match your animation. I give the particle a more powerful force from normal emission, um, and a bit of random. Make sure to check the use modifier stack and random emission. And now we can see some particles emitting from the plane and colliding with both grounds and X-wing. Let's mark the end of emitting force. I'll set it from five normal and one random at the frame 60 and to zero at the frame 100. So all right, let, let's see how it looks like with, uh, with 10,000 particles, enable the visibility and bake. 
good, it's, it's much better with the amount for this layer. I double click on it and rename it big particles. Enable children, set 10 at uh, visible at render, and add an ecosphere. It will be our instance object for particles. Control A, mesh, ecosphere, subdivision 1, and press T. Find smooth shading in the tool panel. So let's hide it for now under the ground. Find your ecosphere and in dupli object, give them a bit of random size, play with the random value for the children particle too, and make sure the children are round around the, the parent particle and set the radius. All right, not bad for now. Add a new layer of particle, select the one you already created, and rename it and make it single. Just delete the children and set the display at, at, as point because we want much more particles for this layer to render it in, in real time. So uh, make them a little bit smaller and increase the number of uh, particles to 1 million. Enable the disk cache. Uh, it, it, it avoids making your scene too heavy with the cache uh, in it and bake. All right, baking is done, let's see. So it, it could be very slow to read your animation in real time. So uh, with this amount of particle, I like to work with uh, the velocity displays. Good, I think I'm, I'm gonna render a play blast quickly to see uh, how it's work. Uh, this is too heavy for my computer to draw every single particle at uh, 20 frames per second. So to create a previous, uh, you just make sure uh, it's at the right output directory. And, and then you just have to click on this uh, clapperboard button and it will uh, save every, every, every frame. All right, I hope this uh, quick tutorial will help you. I'll let you with some little render and I made uh, from this scene. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment and I'll do my best to answer them. So next time I'm coming back with uh, part two of the car crash tutorial. Until then, take care guys and uh, I hope to see you soon.